alveolar bone, or as we say in Italy, osso alveolare by Luomo dei Denti. Now today's lesson is going to be very Italian. I've been watching a lot of uh, Francis Ford Coppola movies and uh, I've become a part of their culture. Their culture, do you understand what I mean? Now I'm going to tell you that alveolar bone is, I'm sorry, I'll stop being weird. Alveolar bone is a mineralized connective tissue that supports and protects teeth. So it is a part of the supporting structures of tooth that hold it in place. Its basic unit is an osteon. It is 60% inorganic hydroxyapatite by wet weight and 25% organic material in it is 90% type 1 collagen, 10% proteins and other growth factors like RGD containing glycoproteins and GLA containing osteocalcin, proteoglycans and genetic factors like DMP1, FEX, I don't know if they call it FEX. I frankly don't care. And MEPE, transforming growth factors, fibroblast growth factors, insulin growth factors, bone morphogenetic growth factors, and there are a few more, I guess. And RGD stands for arginine, lysine, and uh, arginine, glycine, lysine. In the protein amino acid uh, chains now why do we study why, why do we go to all the trouble of doing this stuff well uh, we need to know about pathological bone loss there might be a decay in the tooth that causes the bone loss dental implants can cause bone loss periodontitis can cause bone loss tooth fracture we need to repair tooth fractures as dentists and uh, we need to know how to graft bone as a part of surgical procedures to heal the patient. Now, classification of osso or bone, I've been dabbling in Italian, I shouldn't do that, uh, can be classified by structure as adult lamellar and young woven on the basis of their function and, and their shape as long, short, flat, sesamoid, Sesamoid bones ossifying cartilage, if you didn't know that already. Uh, developmentally, they can be endochondral or intramembranous. And histologically, they can be classified as compact or cancellous. Now, the difference between woven and lamellar bone is that in woven bone, it is uh, much less dense and it forms rapidly. It has a very rapid turnover rate. It is rich in acid phosphates and BSP. It has randomly oriented collagen fibers and osteocytes are larger and irregularly spaced. In the lamellar bone, it forms slowly, but it has a slow turnover rate, but it has a, it has a much denser matrix. It, uh, it has a delayed matrix mineralization. Its collagen fibers have a regular plywood shaped orientation, so it is much tougher rich in osteocalcin and osteocytes are smaller, flattened and regularly spaced. Now, the structure of bone is basically, the basic unit is an osteon. The structure of bone is composed of several osteons separated by cement lines. So what is an osteon? An osteon is basically circumferential lamellae. So they are like rings around one central neural tube which is called a Haversian canal. And this whole thing is called a Haversian system. Haversian system is another name for osteon. But when the bone is cancellous, we do not have a compact Haversian system. We have something called a, we have something called trabecular system. There are trabecular present, which are essentially uh, mineralized fibers that run in random directions, giving a mesh like solid matrix. Now you can see in this horizontal ground section of alveolar bone, what we just discussed an osteon, circumferential lamellae. And these dark spots are places where osteocytes sleep, little osteocytes sleeping in uh, osteocyte beds. And this is the Haversian canal. Now there are different types of cells which uh, control the maintenance of alveolar bone. First of all, the uh, uh, bone ossifies in 
an uncalcified matrix called osteoid and its mineralization is controlled by several factors and one of the main factors is factors of mineralization is 1 to 5 dihydroxy uh, co i'm sorry 1 to 5 dihydroxy cholecalciferol which is the active form of vitamin d if you did not already know that and this remodeling of bone the resorption and remineralization of bone causes tooth drift in the diagram you can see these uh, green pac-man monsters are the osteoclasts the type of cell that resorb the bone and the pink cute ones are the osteoblasts that form the bone now you must be asking me what the hell is an osteocyte what the hell is an osteoblast what the hell is an osteoclast fear not the teeth man will tell you uh, now these three types of cells are actually the types of uh, different types of cells that maintain the bones and they are osteoblasts and bone lining cells which are basically osteocytes on the surface of the bone are derived from osteoprogenitor cells so osteoblasts are the type of cells that form the bone they are derived from osteoprogenitor cells when while forming the bone they get trapped in the matrix osteocytes get trapped in the matrix they form osteocytes so osteoblasts are basically mesenchymal in origin they secrete and mineralize organic mineralize the organic matrix they are rich in alkaline phosphates and uh, now osteocytes are the trapped osteoblasts and they uh, occupy the spaces in the bone matrix and they are connected via the canaliculi and the osteocytes are resorbing cells now all the cells originating from the osteoprogenitor cells are basically mesenchymal in origin but uh, osteoclasts are hemopoietic in origin so in what does that mean that means in meaning that is derived from giant cells of the blood means it's of wbc origin uh, multinucleated giant cells they resorb bone and they live inside house shaped lacunae which are large lacunar spaces and while they resorb bone this is an osteoclast they while they resorb bone they leave snail tracks on the bone bone can be resorbed in two ways we will come to that shortly uh, they have now that now an osteoclast is something to look at very closely it has two ceiling zones on both sides and uh, it basically uses carbonic acid to dissolve bone it uh, bone also has sharpies fibers and i'm sorry that's uh, we'll come to that later a bone has sharpies fibers for uh, attaching it to the cementum um, bone remodeling occurs due to mechanical and chemical stimulus the bone remodels in this process first osteoclasts resorb the bone then there is a reversal of the bone lining cells i'm sorry not bone lining cells the osteoblasts come in and then they remineralize the area again uh, regenerating the bone structure now sharpies fibers are fibers that are secreted by the fibroblasts present in the bone and osteoblasts secrete the intrinsic fibers sharpies fibers attach the tooth to the bone via the cementum basically the cementum of the tooth is attached to the bone now there are several factors controlling the remodeling of bone you can see over here the green pac-man cells are the i'm saying pac-man it's, it's a popular game if you haven't played it you you had a you had a bad childhood anyway uh, the osteoblasts reforming the reforming the bone and a bunch of chemical messengers helping them to do that you can follow this diagram to understand you can keep coming back to this diagram by pausing the video and scrolling to that timestamp now the resorption activity is controlled mainly by cyto uh, cytokines that are inflammatory and in, uh, they are mainly interleukins there are uh, 
reactor act uh, receptor activator of uh, nuclear kappa i'm sorry uh, we'll just call them rank l i frankly forgot i don't remember what rank l stands for and i couldn't give a crap uh, hypoxia and acidification also increase the resorbing action the remineralization action is mainly carried out by the osteoprotegrin i remember that one just fine because it blocks rank l if you remember what rank l means tell me in the comment section remind me of it uh remineralization is also increased by bone morphogenetic growth factors nitric oxide because nitric oxide expands the blood vessels and allow more blood supply sclerostein blocks the wingless transforming growth factors and reduce the remineralization now bone remodeling mainly depends on the opg rankel ratio vitamin d and parathyroid hormones you can refer to this chart for for the details all these beautiful charts and diagrams are taken from the berkowitz book now bone is mainly resorbed in two ways one of the ways is uh, it is resorbed on the surface this diagram shows the surface resorption when it is happening inside the bone it usually forms a cutting cone that is headed by the osteoclast boring through the i don't know have you heard of elon musk's the boring company i know i'm advertising them for free but they are saving the world musk is saving the world buy i don't know buy tesla shares if you can so there is the cutting cone the cutting cone is headed by osteoclasts which bores through the bone and then osteoblasts again form the bone back and the cone thins out because the bone is getting reformed this is how it happens inside the bone and that's all for today thank you for watching and now i'm going to sing something by another illustrious italian frank sinatra when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie that's a more when the world looks like it just has had too much wine that's a more uh, i know only those two lines